Welcome to iLectrum Online. Another very typical application of Coulomb's law is the two strings with the two masses, each containing some charge, hung side by side, but because they're equal in charge, they will repel one another until eventually they will stick into a certain position where the net forces on them are equal to zero or where they are what we call in static equilibrium. The question then may be how much charge will it require such that the angle between the string and the vertical is equal to 10 degrees and what is the tension on the string? So how do we do that? How do we work out a problem like this? Again, we start out by drawing vectors. We need to have the force vectors drawn and the first thing we might think about it since they have a mass of one kilogram that there'll be a force downward equal to the force of gravity mass times acceleration to the gravity. And then we realize that there's a force of repulsion between them. So this one will feel a repulsive force from this charge. And so there'll be a force to the left. And so that force will be equal to the Coulomb force, where the Coulomb force is going to be equal to K times the product of the charges. And since they're the same charge, we just say Q, Q squared, divided by the distance between them squared, and we'll call the distance D. And finally, we realize there is tension on the string which pulls in this direction. And so what we can then do is we can draw a force diagram where the shape of the geometric triangle is proportional to the shape of the triangle that makes up the forces. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw these three forces in the same shape as this triangle and proportionally they must be the same. So we see a tension in this direction we see the force due to gravity, mg, in this direction, and we see the, the Coulomb force, which is equal to k q squared over d squared, in this direction. So now we have a similar triangle that we have over here, and proportionally, the magnitude of those three force vectors must be equal proportionally to the magnitude of the geometric lengths of that triangle. We then also realize that this angle must be 10 degrees. And then in order to solve this question, because after all, what are we looking for? We're looking for the amount of charge. We're solving for Q. That's what we're looking for, right? We're trying to look for Q. And so what we can then say is that the tangent of the angle theta, by definition, which is the ratio of the opposite side of the angle to the adjacent side of the angle, must therefore equal to the opposite side, which is K Q squared divided by d squared divided by the adjacent side, which is m times g. So in other words, the tangent must be equal to k q squared divided by m g d squared. Hmm, but now we have a problem. We don't know d, at least not yet. But what we can then do is say, well, if we take half of that and call this d divided by 2, we then realize that d divided by 2 is equal to, oh, we need to know the length. I didn't give you the length yet, so let's throw a length in there. Let's say the length of the string is equal to 2 meters, because if we don't know the length, then we can't solve the problem. So now that we have the length, and we need to find d, we can then say that d, which is the opposite side of the angle right here, is going to be equal to, or better yet, let me, it's probably better to go like this. Uh, since we're dealing with the opposite side, we want the sine, so the sine of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which means it's equal to d over 2 divided by L. And so then we can say that sine of theta is equal to d divided by 2L, or d is equal to 2L times the sine of theta. And of course, we know what these are now, so this is equal to 2 times the length, which is 2 meters, times the sine of 10 degrees. And so we can see that right away. We can find out what d is. And then, of course, since we want d divided by 2, uh, let's see here, d squared. No, we're good. We want d here. So we're good. So anyway, that would be um, uh, 4 times the sine of 10 equals, and we get 0 0.694. Six six nine four six, so zero point six nine four six meters. So now that we have d from that geometry, we can then go in here and solve this for q. So we have q squared is equal to 
the tangent of theta times mgd squared and divide all that by k. And then if we take the square root of that, we can then say that q is equal to d times the square root of mg times the tangent of theta divided by k. And then if we plug in all the values, we can say that q is equal to the distance, which is 0 0.6946, 0 0.6946, times the square root of 1, times 9.8, times the tangent of 10 degrees, divided by 9 times 10 to the 9th. All right, so now let's find out what the charge required is to keep them that distance apart. So we multiply that times, oh, let me start over like this. Okay, so we have 9.8 times 10, take the tangent, divided by 9e to the 9th, take the square root, and then multiply that times, times 0.6946 equals, and we have 9.62, 9.62, .62 microcoulombs. That charge will cause those two spheres to be pushed apart so that the angle is 10 degrees. What about the tension? Now we need to find the tension. Well, we know mg, we know the angle, and that's the hypotenuse. So mg is the adjacent side, so we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to, by ratio, the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, the adjacent side is mg, and the hypotenuse is t, which means that t is equal to mg divided by the cosine of 10 degrees. So the tension is equal to 1 times 9.8 divided by the cosine of 10 degrees, and 9.8 divided by 10, take the cosine, and that would be 9.95 newtons. So that gives you the tension, and here we have the charge. And that is how it's done. Yeah, I skip on the units because it would become pretty messy. Yeah, but that's not, how do people know it's microcoulombs at the end? Ah, that's a good question. How do we know it's microcoulombs? How do we do that? Hmm. Hmm. Because I end up with, so what my calculator said, my calculator said the following. My calculator said that Q was equal to 9.62 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, right? That's what I got on my calculator, and I just converted to microcoulombs. Yeah, but how do you know it's coulombs in the first place? Ah, standard units. So if we use standard units for mass, kilograms, standard units for G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and standard units for that. So, so that's a good question, right? So it's like, how do we know that we end up with coulombs because I use standard units? But if we're not sure, let's go ahead and replace this and put in the units and see what we get. So here we have Q is equal to the distance, which is 0 0.6946 meters times the square root of one kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared times the tangent of 10 degrees divided by 9.9 times 10 to the 9th, this would be Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And so what we would have to do is looking at, so we have kilogram meters per second square, that would be a Newton. So that cancels out. So we have a kilogram meters per second squared that's equal to Newton. So that cancels out. Let me use a different color. So a kilogram 
meter per second squared is the same as a newton, so that cancels out. We have meter squared in the denominator, but we have the square root, so that becomes meters outside the square root symbol. We have meters here, so that cancels out. Then we have 1 over c squared, 1 over coulomb squared in the denominator, which is the same as saying coulomb squared in the numerator, but it's inside the square root sign, so we take the square root of that, we get coulombs, and that's where this comes from. So definitely, if you follow the units, you can figure out that that's the correct unit to use. Units are important because <laughs> Units are definitely important, and perhaps I need to put in more units so that we can check for the units. Because that way you know that you did it correctly as well. well Good point. We are here. <laughs> Much more of a chance to be correct when the units are correct. Of course, you could punch in the wrong number on your calculator, but other than that, the units seem to match. <laughs>